Uh, while I get settled here, is, is this the drink place? Yeah. Just, I'm allowed to put a drink here. So, glad to be here tonight, but I want to tell you, I'm a little fired up. I'm very upset about the political correctness in this world and the fact that there's a certain very large segment of people that are not covered. I mean, in this day and age, you can't call someone a midget or a dwarf. They're little people. You can't tell someone who can't see that they're blind. You have to say they're visually impaired. Someone can't hear, you don't call them deaf. You say they're hearing challenged. Now I gotta tell you, I wear hearing aids. I'm hearing challenged. If I couldn't hear anything, I think I'd be deaf. <laughs> but it's just the way it is, no matter what we do in this world. There, there's even a whole acronym for gay and transgender people. I mean, for years, I thought a BLT was a delicious sandwich. <laughs> now I understand it also designates an alternate sexual lifestyle. But yet, there's no protection for fat people. In this day, you can still call fat people fat. What is it about the corpulent that allows body shaming? I mean, I really think that, it, and it's not just fat. You see, there's all these clever adjectives. There's fat slob. <laughs> There's fat bastard. There's fat shit. And let's not forget the most famous, the fat fuck. Which I have no idea what that is. From this time forth, I would like to introduce a politically correct term. I would like to see these people be called calorically challenged or metabolically impaired. I think that would be fair. I think that would be a good way to go. But you see, political correctness has gotten to the point where you can't even talk about things that were normally just sayings. I mean, I can no longer call a spade a spade to state the obvious. I can no longer say that I that there's no sacred cows to show that I'm open to new ideas. I can't even get all my ducks in a row for fear that I'm excluding geese or some other waterfowl. <laughs> but you know, no matter what happens with political correctness, the fact of the matter is, Stereotypes are stereotypes because they're true. My wife and I went on a cruise a few months ago. We took some pictures. Most of them sucked. <laughs> so the last night of the cruise, we're all dressed up. We looked pretty good, and we said, hey, you know what? I want to get a good picture of this cruise. So what did I do? I found an Asian guy. <laughs> he took the best damn picture of the entire vacation. That I can tell you. And also, there's also stereotypes that will never work. I mean, who here has seen a homeless Jewish guy? <laughs> Come on. How about a Chinese kid in remedial math? <laughs> Anybody see a gay man dressed slovenly? <laughs> and I really want to know if anyone has ever seen an English family known for their gourmet cooking or brilliant smile. <laughs> but the one that I wonder about most, does anybody know a black family that lives like the people on Blackish. <laughs> I'm just saying. But anyway, I want to tell you a little bit about me. I'm in my second marriage going on uh, 24 years. It's working out pretty well. But the first marriage, not so good. Matter of fact, they made a movie about it. Hopefully many of you saw it. It was called 12 Years a Slave. <laughs> but I have six kids. Yeah, believe it or not, I have six kids. I'm like a black man in a white man's body. <laughs> but they all know where to find me on Father's Day. And I just want to say, I gotta tell you, raising kids is the hardest job. And parents out there, can you, right? I mean, is raising kids the hardest job there is? Yeah. But you gotta look at it similar to a 401k. Okay? You know, you start a retirement plan and they tell you, put some money away, and in 25 years you'll be okay. It's kind of like that with kids. If you want instant gratification, do not raise children. And if you're going to judge your performance based on how the kids do month to month, you're going to be as disappointed as when you open up your 401k statement when the stock market had a down period. Okay? What you've got to hope for is that you do the right job, and then 25 years later, you have raised self-sufficient adults that you can engage with, kind of like the equivalent of your 401k, making sure you don't have to eat cat food in retirement. <laughs> If you do a shitty job, chances are the kids are walking into walls, have no direction, probably living in your basement. One of them may even be in a bell tower with a high-powered rifle. And that's the equivalent of giving all your retirement money to Bernie Madoff. <laughs> but you know, I'm also very concerned about the immigrant problem. And I don't mean politically, I'm not getting into that. 
I want to know how these poor people come over to this country and get a handle on our language and understand our idioms. Our words mean so many things. I mean, take the word shit. It's a noun. It's a verb. It's an adjective. It's an adverb. I mean, you've got people saying, I really need to get my shit together. And you've got other people saying, i got to get rid of all the shit that I've got. <laughs> then you've got somebody saying, i got to take a shit, which is odd because isn't the overall goal to leave the little turd in the bowl? <laughs> Then you get somebody who comes over to your house for dinner and you serve them something, they go, ugh, tastes like shit. Which I don't know about you, but I start wondering where they got the ability to make that comparison. <laughs> and then if somebody looks at somebody who's yeah, not real, I don't know, physical or athletic and says, you're slow as shit, they obviously have never experienced explosive diarrhea. <laughs> Speaking of diarrhea, are you guys in tune to the drug commercials that are on TV today? I mean, I gotta tell you, they go on for about 10 seconds telling you what benefit these cleverly named drugs can, can give you, and then spend the rest of the time telling you about all the side effects and all the drug interactions. And then they finish up by telling you that you should tell your doctor you want this drug. <laughs> I gotta tell you, if I gotta go to my doctor and tell him what he needs to prescribe to me, I'm getting another doctor. And if I can't rely on my doctor to give me or prescribe a regimen of treatment that isn't gonna cause anal leakage, I'm also gonna get another doctor. But I also I gotta ask you, do you ever wonder how did we ever name bathrooms away from the home? restrooms. Seriously? Anybody ever just pop into one of those rooms and kick back, have a nap? <laughs> Read a book? I mean, generally speaking, when you use a restroom, you're working. Okay? <laughs> Under the best conditions, there is an orderly evacuation. <laughs> Under the worst conditions, you're racing your intestines to the toilet like you had bad Mexican food. <laughs> so you got to think about that, too. Yeah. And speaking about that kind of stuff, you ever wonder who decides to become a proctologist? <laughs> See, I don't think anybody decides to become a proctologist. All these guys go to med school, they sign up, they want to be cardiologists, neurologists, or some other high-classologist. And about six months into the program, the professor puts his arm around them and says, you're not cutting it. I think you need to set your sights a little lower. <laughs> about three feet lower. <laughs> so you think about this, poor guy goes through medical school and becomes an ass doctor. And for the rest of his life, he's got to figure out the, the ultimate evacuation plan for all humans. And then, if his patient turns out to be an asshole, he automatically has a double whammy. <laughs> Tough situation. Uh, you know, I'm going to be 62 in about a week. And uh, it's funny because we all are supposed to mature, but I have a friend, Barry, who never grew up. He's a 62-year-old teenager, and he's out of his mind. But he is fun. So he says to me, come on, let's go out. We're gonna to go to the bar, and we're gonna have a good time. So we get into the bar and he says, watch this, which generally means something very funny or very disgusting is going to happen. <laughs> he tells the bartender that he wants to entertain the entire bar so that we can have drinks. Bartender says, what do you do? He says, well, I have quite the talent. I can fart the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> Bartender's intrigued. Plus, there's no band that night. <laughs> so he says to Barry, okay, you got a deal. He goes and gongs the gong behind the bar and tells everybody, hey, we got this guy, Barry. Bring your attention to the stage. Barry's gonna fart the Star Spangled Banner. Everyone's a little bit apprehensive, so <laughs> curious. Barry gets up on the stage, takes a bow, turns around, unbuckles his pants, drops his pants, drops his underwear, and proceeds to shit all over the stage. People are horrified, they're screaming, and women pass out. Disgusting. Barry, the wise guy that he is, turns around over his shoulder, looks back at the crowd, and he says, Hey, relax. Even Frank Sinatra gets a chance to clear his throat. <laughs> That's my time. Right? That's it. Woo!